just making sure everything works for my talk. Uh, all right, so I'm not talking about the scape itself. Uh, there's a much more qualified people, maybe even in the room to, to talk about that, but I will give a brief introduction. What I'm talking about is uh, the integration of uh, a test science case, a uh, test science project regarding dark matter into escape. So going on uh, slide two, the escape project is uh, a very large uh, European collection of uh, research infrastructures for particle and astroparticle physics. I'm also turning on my camera, but if, it is, if my audio becomes too problematic, let me know because my connection is not optimal. Um, okay, so escape is intending to build and provide services to the scientific community of astrophysics and particle physics. And with services, there's a, a, a very wide range, as you'll see in the next slide, of, uh, of things that the SCAPE is meaning to provide. The idea is that the data needs to be fair, uh, with the fair principles. And uh, this is, requires complementary excellence in all the communities involved. And uh, we all deal with data, we do deal with very large amounts of data. Uh, some of the data is more or less public, and this is what the uh, this is what the community is doing. So there's a virtual observatory infrastructure for astronomy where the data is made public uh, quite soon after it's recorded. Uh, this is not the case, for example, in high energy physics, but the expertise there is in exabyte scale data management and distributed computing. And escape means to fulfill the need of uh, this global and open access to data and its long-term correlation and sustainability. Because if you record the data and then you don't have any metadata, for example, then the data does not, is not usable for others. So this is what escape is, is meaning to do. So on page three, this is a screenshot of the services that are meant uh, to, uh, to be towards the European Open Science Cloud. This is what is called EOSC. And there are uh, five uh, services at this point. I will not go into details. You can see the, I will add the link to the slides, the original slides if you want more. But there's a virtual observatory. There's a citizen science uh, box where there's uh, citizens involved in the, the science made. There's a data lake uh, that is uh, one place to store the data. There's the software and service catalog. So this is uh, maybe the, the part that is most relevant to this workshop. It's a, a catalog of, uh, software that also uh, data sets, publication and training resources that can be accessed by the community. And then there's the science analysis platform that uh, puts everything together and uh, is the entry point for the users to go and access the other, uh, the other services by escape. And all of this would be implementing the European Open Science Cloud, which is uh, something that is in development right now. And it's very important that the the S in science is represented there because there's a lot of stakeholders. Uh, that said, what is the software catalog since uh, this is the one that is uh, maybe most relevant for this workshop. It's also called OSSR and it's an open source scientific software and service repository. And this is the, this has the aim to develop and uh, expose all the tools of the projects that are in escape in a repository that can be also run in the European Open Science Cloud. So, its objective are to develop and deploy and uh, expose and preserve all the software tools and services. Also promoting reuse of software and cross fertilization. If you have a common catalog, then people can look at it and pick up off the shelf component if needed. And uh, it also wants to uh, stimulate innovation for open standards and then have common uh, regulations and common software, for, for example. This is something that we, we'll try to see in the next slide to see if we can get to that. And uh, its objectives follow a community-based approach and the fair principles for open software. So this is a, a prototype, it doesn't include everyone and it doesn't mean to include everyone, it's more or less a, a, a two-way street. If one wants their software on this catalog, then it gets more visibility, but it has to have some requirements, some sustainability requirement essentially, not to have a, a, a catalog that uh, uh, that is not sustainable. So this is uh, something that uh, I think will need further discussion beyond this talk, uh, but it might be interesting for, for the community and for people who are presented here. Maybe we will contact them directly uh, to, to get involved in, uh, in discussions with this, uh, this repository. 
So let's go on to the topic of the talk and why are we doing test science projects? And the idea is that we will need to demonstrate that this uh, huge infrastructure is going to work for the researchers. Because there's a, a lot of the time there is a divide between people that are making the plot or analyzing the data and the people who are providing the data or providing the software. And this divide needs to be, this, this, bridge, this gap needs to be bridged. So this is why there's an involvement of the researchers to demonstrate that there are open science capabilities and these services actually work. So in trying out the, uh, the various services with the uh, proper example case, then ESCAPE can receive feedback from the researchers and researchers can benefit from the synergies beyond the, uh, across all, the, all these different instruments. And this is also supported by the consortia of EU member states and research agencies and institutes within the joint ECFA, NUPEC and APEC activities. So this is called the ENA. So there is also a push from, uh, from up above, so to, so to say, to do this kind of things. So dark matter is a science case. We don't really need to go into it. We've seen a lot of it, uh, but it is a good science case because it does require a lot of different expertise and a lot of different experiments. There's different kinds of dark matter and there's uh, different uh, synergies that can, be, um, that can be there depending on how one looks at dark matter, what one thinks dark matter is. So there's many hypotheses to dark matter. There's many ways to detect it. And therefore many different experiments that have different data and workflow needs or data result sharing policies. And uh, if you zoom in in uh, one of the, the models that uh, people have been studying for the longest is the weakly interacting massive particles then you have uh, a number of experiments uh, and the uh, theory and astrophysics binding them all that uh, have been studying this model and established a, a clear complementarity between this, these experiments. Also, we have to say that these models are not yet completely excluded, even though some people think uh, it's, uh, they're not good to look for anymore. But uh, in the following, we're, we will try to take WIMPs as, as an example for the test science case, just because it's simpler to, to describe one thing at a time. But it doesn't mean that the test science case is restricted to, uh, to WIMPs. So why complementarity and what we need to bring forward with this the test science project is that dark matter discoveries will need complementary experiments involving dark matter with cosmological origin, but also experiments that can produce dark matter. So you have direct detection that discovers dark matter that interacts inside the detector. There's the indirect detection uh, that sees the annihilating and decaying dark matter. And there's accelerators and colliders that can produce dark matter and probe the dark interaction. So this is something that is uh, uh, that we all know, but we've not we work together to a certain extent. But there's still a lot of work to do, and the work on the common languages and common resources of plots, of common scenarios, common tools, common benchmarks is ongoing in many communities. You can have a couple of links there. There's actually more than that. So what do we want to? to bring forward here is that the best region to find a weakly interactive massive particle in is not the place where there's one experiment at a time that has sensitivity, but the place where the region where most experiments have sensitivity. So you can confirm this complementarity. And this is the case of a Higgs portal model here where you have circled future colliders and future uh, direct detection experiments as an example. So it's this kind of complementarity that is the big picture for the best science case, but in practice, even if you just look at colliders and direct detection, I've moved to slide 11, there's huge differences in the collaboration variety and size. So you see that the, there's a Atlas and CMS, these are two LHC experiments looking for dark matter. They are huge compared to the multitude of uh, direct detection experiments. This also means that there's difference in the data volumes and the, in the workflow. So colliders will have big data volumes, but direct detection and also indirect detection will have smaller data volumes to deal with. But where everyone comes together is the statistical analysis, the interpretation of results. So there's some synergies there. We also have to keep in mind that, that there's a different modus operandi for indirect detection because in uh, indirect detection, the collaborations release data for, for general use, but also perform high profile analysis themselves. While for direct detection and, and uh, LHC, uh, the collaboration itself tends to do the analysis first and then the data gets released. Uh, there are some exceptions to that. But still, this test science project doesn't want to change things. It wants to bring things together and see how, how things work. So there are different end-to-end -end analysis workflows, and this is a very simplified picture, uh, but more or less 
everyone will start from generation or simulation of events or experimental data, then start processing this data, reconstruct and calibrate it. They will analyze this data. So we'll try to subtract the background uh, or estimate it, uh, do a statistical analysis, and then the results will be interpreted so that uh, the results can be combined with other searches and, uh, and experiments and compared. So this is something that uh, I'm showing some plots that uh, you also have seen in previous talks. There's one plot by Gambit, that is one program that does this, uh, this kind of combination and comparisons. So there is a whole set of uh, different parts to, to getting a, a dark matter discovery or dark matter exclusion. And there's challenges here, and it's not possible to, start to find a one size fits all solution. It would be uh, not just optimistic, but also not credible to say we are all now going to work on the same infrastructure with the same tools. So one needs to work in parallel at the start. So the idea for this test science project is uh, not an original idea. There's many workshops that have tried this, is to review what's done by various collaborations and find points of contact. For example, there could be data sharing and data processing challenges for, uh, for different experiments uh, with data management or analysis frameworks. But there's also data analysis and preservation and interpretation challenges. So when different experiments want to combine the results, how they're going to do it and what tools do they need and what kind of language they need to speak to, uh, to have this combination. And uh, in that sense, I will go a bit more in detail on the Atlas experiment perspective because that's where I'm from. And uh, there is uh, the data sharing and processes in this case is uh, um, dictated, well not dictated, but it's agreed upon uh, by all the collaboration using a CERN-wide data sharing policy. And there's benefits from the High Energy Physics Software Foundation to understand shared solutions for data processing challenges. And uh, here is the place where the interactions within the ESCAPE software catalog will, be, will, take, uh, will take place. In terms of data analysis and interpretation, what we're trying to do is start working on a test generic dark matter search on the side of data analysis and data preservation. So there is a, a recast and Rihanna that can preserve the workflow and the analysis code. This is built around the idea of containerized workflows that you've seen in previous talks as well. And the, the likelihoods will be preserved with PI, PYHF. That's something that was presented yesterday, I believe. And then the results can be interpreted in, in a number of different ways. Uh, deposited in head data, uh, one can do reinterpretation with Contour or other tools. And one could also use Gambit or DDCalc for combinations. So here's the, uh, the, the idea behind Recast and Rihanna. Uh, Recast is allowing the members of the collaboration at the moment only to preserve the analysis pipeline, starting from the reconstructed data and then rerun it easily using different dark matter models. You can see more about this in the talks that I've linked there. And then Rihanna is the analysis platform where you can run these pipelines. So the idea is that we are going to implement a dark matter analysis pipeline in Recast and Rihanna. Some of these are already existing because people have been using this in Atlas. Then we will adapt uh, Recast and Rihanna to work within the ESCAPE and the European Open Science Cloud ecosystem. And then we will be able to produce results that are ready to be interpreted in different dark matter models. This already happens within the Atlas collaboration. We're not reinventing the wheel, we're just making it more visible. And this is uh, something that is not just an idea that we have, it's that you need foundations uh, to be more visible to exploit the synergy. So you can answer a, a common question like dark matter with astroparticle, particle and nuclear physics inputs, but they need to all sit on a common theory ground and you need to have data acquisition, computing, data sharing and open science as the foundations. So this is why we also uh, want to get in touch and we already are in touch with some of the members of this uh, different collaborations that uh, are not just pure science, uh, pure interpretation, but go beyond that. And uh, there's a synergy between, uh, I'm talking about synergies a lot here, but uh, in the searches and interpretation of dark matter, I wanted to point out this uh, initiative for dark matter in Europe and beyond called IDMEU, that intends to build a discussion platform to facilitate collaborations of existing groups and efforts on dark matter searches and interpretation. So for example, the discussion on what, um, how direct detection could handle their metadata could happen there. Uh, and this has been uh, quite delayed by the pandemic, unfortunately. We, had, we were supposed to have a kickoff meeting last year, but it's been moved until next year. So uh, if you go to this link here, you can subscribe to the newsletter for announcements. 
And this is uh, somehow the end point of this dark matter test science project where we want to compare the end to end analysis workflows and get these plots and get the experimental curves by the example escape experiments that can go as input of the dark matter interpretation. So what do we do next? And this is my last slide. Um, this was one, this is one of the first talks that we give uh, about this uh, dark matter uh, test science project. And as you can see, things are still quite a bit in motion. Uh, this is a, a first step of escape with the European Open Science Cloud to reach out to researchers. So what we want to do is demonstrate the selected end-to-end -end pipelines for direct, indirect, and uh, collider searches for dark matter, and we integrate them in the escape and the European Open Science infrastructure. We will also include an outreach and citizen science component. We really don't want to reinvent any wheels or privilege one workflow over the other. We just aim to collect and test things. And the pipelines will produce results that will help characterize or discover or constrain dark matter, hopefully. We're at the moment in the process of collecting information, so I'm very happy to get questions or emails uh, about, uh, about this and probably not being overtly clear in a talk of 15 minutes. Uh, but uh, there is already a, a good community on board from high energy collider indirect detection and there's combination work already ongoing. Uh, but of course, escape seeks more input from the non-escape and non-collider communities, for example, direct detection, astrophysics and theory, we've just had coffee chats. And of course, these communities will need more input from escape. What are you doing? What are you trying to, to go to? And uh, one important question that I'm not mentioning here in this written slide is, how do you sustain the career path of doing, of people doing that? But that's a big, it's a big thing. It's a big question and there is a lot of support for that. And we'll have a kickoff of this test science project and regular discussions once the main players have been identified. And we're also waiting for a funding proposal decision and so on. So this will start and be advertised in the next few weeks. So thanks a lot for your attention and I hope to hear from you. Thank you very much. Uh, are there questions? No, I have one. What what is the practical organization in fact for for the the project? Uh, do you have mailing list, um, uh, websites? So at the moment, IDMEU this initiative has a mail has a website, but not it's not started yet because we're looking for a kickoff meeting, in um, that will happen in May next year everything allowing that like if it's if it's allowed to go ahead and the, the test science case doesn't have yet that kind of organization but it will be it will have it very soon so right now we're more or less giving talks around the different uh, communities and getting individual interest and we already have a nucleus of people that are already working in escape and have signed up and will uh, will participate in this uh, but we will also do some more advertisement in the future to see if anyone else is interested in uh, in joining up and, and trying this. So I, I think at the moment this, uh, this talk came a little too early. I was expecting to have better tools to get in touch, but for now just email me and I will make sure that whenever this email, this mailing list happens, it will happen. Uh, then you're, uh, you can stay in touch. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Okay, I don't see other questions. So thank you again. Thank you very much. So this is the end of the morning session. We continue with one talk at uh, 2 p.m. CET, which will be followed by tutorials. So thank you and see you later.